Yo, what is good everyone? OJ here. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Grasshopper Manufacturer and Su-51 in addition to how it seems like they are trying to split off from being a subsidiary of Gung Ho. You guys know Puzzles and Dragon Z. Yeah, big old huge corporation over there in Japan. It seems like things are changing for Grasshopper Manufacturer and they're looking to potentially get into an exclusive contract with Nintendo or kind of just break off and be indie again. There have been some changes that weren't necessarily reported by all of the media out there and shout out to Dream Boom or Dream Boom. I'm not exactly sure how to say his name, but over there on Reset Era, he actually actually put up a post talking about the company fact sheets and what changed in a very short amount of time from November 19th, 2018 to December 12th, 2018 and how the company fact sheets changed. So let's go over a couple different things here. So back on November 19th, the fact sheet that you guys can see to the left, they have 35 employees. They're worth 50 million yen or that's their capital. The date of establishment, everything's still the same there, their business outline, but the major clients they say Gung Ho Online Entertainment Inc. and Katokawa Games. And also their bank is the Mizuho Bank LTD. Now if you move over to December 12, 2018, so less than a month later, look at how much things have changed. Their address. They actually moved out of the Gung Ho building and into a separate one. So if they're a subsidiary and they're in that building, why did they move out? On top of that, look at the number of employees and the capital. They went from 35 employees to 20, so a pretty sharp reduction in workforce. And on top of that, look at the capital, 50 million yen to 10 million yen. And here is probably one of the major things outside of those two. Obviously, those two are really big, your workforce and how much capital you have. On top of that, look at the major clients. You still have Gung Ho, you still have Katakawa, but Nintendo is also listed as well. And here's the thing. We already knew about the deal with Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes, and with Nintendo a while ago. Why did they just change this at this point? That game was announced back in 2017. There's already been plenty of information about it and time for them to put Nintendo as a major client beforehand. So this could mean a couple different things, but I wanna go into what the poster had to say about this, and then I'll go in and give my thoughts on it. So here's what he had to say about the outlook of the company. One, it shows that they have changed their office location, like I talked about. Two, the number of employees, right? Number three, the capital, talked about that as well. Number four, Nintendo's major client. And number five, they changed banks. So it seems very weird for a company who's a subsidiary to have all these different things change. Why did the capital go down so much why do they lose so much of their workforce like what's going on here it does seem and i'm not trying to sit here and say this is a fact but it does seem like they're trying to split off from gung-ho entirely and maybe enter a contract with nintendo to produce no more heroes or to produce different types of games exclusively it could be like a next level type of situation where nintendo doesn't flat out own next level games but they have a long-term type of like second party contract with them and as you've noticed with Super 51 he really wants to try to see if he can move and get travis into super smash brothers he wants to make content for the nintendo switch which he wants to make content for Nintendo platforms. He wants to make No More Heroes 3. And in a recent interview, Suda actually said like, Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes has to be successful in order for them to get funding or to potentially make a No More Heroes 3. So that's the thing here. It just seems like everything is kind of lining up to where Grasshopper Manufacturer might become split off from Gung Ho, or there might be maybe a sale of some sort. Nintendo does purchase them. I don't know if that would happen just because Nintendo never really eats up companies like that at all, but maybe they go into a publishing deal or maybe they go into like a second party type of thing with this company. You have to look at it as they're really small. Their capital is only 10 million yen. That is literally nothing to Nintendo. Uh, they do have some talented developers there and there are some games in the backlog that I think that would play well on the Nintendo Switch. You have Killer7, you also have some other games that Suda has done. Obviously, No More Heroes 1, No More Heroes 2. Everybody would love to see those get funded and get them put out, but they would take 
quite a bit of work. They're a bit clunky in today's day when it comes to it. They need a lot of brush ups from how they were before. But what I'm doing here is just kind of speculation on the matter. But the facts are the facts when it comes to what's going down with Suda and the partnership that he does have with Nintendo. Now, from what we do know, it does seem like Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes is self published. Not even seen. It is self published. However, I think Nintendo's helping out with distribution of the game when it comes to the physical cartridges. I don't think Suda and his company is paying for all of that just because of the way that they did the partnership with Nintendo in terms of how Nintendo listed it and everything. It does seem like there is a distribution partnership and maybe Suda and his team didn't have to actually pay for those physical edition cartridges because I'm not sure if they were able to do so. But either way, it does seem like something is going down here and I would love for Travis Strikes Again at No More Heroes if we can just talk about the game for a second because that's what it's about, right? I would love for this game to just do amazing and everybody go out there and buy the game and we get No More Heroes 3 exclusive Nintendo published, whatever the case is, and they get the funds. But it does seem like they are hurting a little bit here when it comes to that. And they're becoming smaller and smaller. And if you look at the promotion and marketing for Grasshopper Manufacturer and even Travis Strikes Again No More Heroes, there is a huge emphasis on indie there's a huge emphasis on being independent and the different indie games that are in there yet they are owned by gung-ho so something might have happened there maybe they haven't announced it at this point yet but to be moving out of the building to reduce the workforce to continue to push indie and all of this stuff and to lose so much capital despite being a subsidiary of this other company which i guess that's happened before right i don't think it's the first time but man it does seem like something is going down there and i really didn't see a lot of places reporting on kind of what happened there so i think it'd be interesting but at the same time it might be a strategic move by gung-ho as well we don't know who is the one that's trying to break off from the partnership or even if it's mutual it could be that knowing Sue and kind of his ambitions and seeing how Grasshopper Manufacturer has been handled since they were acquired. I don't really think Suda's happy with what they've done so far. I mean, they've got some cool stuff that they did, but what have they actually done? The Lily Bergamo game or whatever that was, that was pretty much done or turned into something else to let it die or whatever it was. And let it die is let it die. I mean, what have they done since No More Heroes 2, to be honest? They did Lollipop Chainsaw and all that, but I don't think they were acquired by that time when it comes to it. So when they've been acquired or been under Gung Ho's watch, they haven't really made any hits. They haven't made anything as iconic as No More Heroes or even like, what was it, the game that he did with um, the guy from the Resident Evil 4, uh, Shadows of the Dam? There hasn't even been anything like that. So to me, it seems like Suda is trying to gain some more independence, is trying to really get in with Nintendo because it's listed as one of their major clients. And he's been pushing hard for Travis for Smash Brothers and to do more Nintendo stuff. So maybe there's something in the works there. I really don't know, but I think that it's fun to talk about it in general. Now, one last thing that I want to discuss with Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes. I do think that the success of this game, it's set up to do well, right? Like people are kind of worried or maybe or so about the game that it's not a true No More Heroes, but they've got a couple good things going for it. One, the fact that it does seem like it controls really well based off the previews and it's fun there. There's a lot of different content in there, but the price of the game, that's the big thing that I remember saying, oh wow, it's $39.99 instead of 60 bucks. So that's also really good. Plus the season pass stuff seems really cool as well. Well, they still need to clarify because I think you get the season pass stuff if you buy the physical version of the game. You need to see if we can get some more details on it because they did announce the pricing that it's 10 bucks for both of the characters in there, which is Shinobu in addition to Bad Girl. So we'll see how that plays out. But I think that the price is really good. I think that seeing Travis again on there is pretty cool as well. They have some local co-op in there. That's always fun if you can get somebody in. It would be great if there was online, but hey, it is what it is. They don't have a lot of money for this. This one here obviously this is a budget or more of a smaller end title they're using unreal engine 4 the game has a clean look to it so there are some things going for it when it comes to travis strikes again no more heroes and i think it's going to do well enough to at least get the confidence of nintendo to potentially have a no more heroes 3 and i know like marvelous or somebody else owns the ip with them so that would be like a joint collaboration between all of the companies but i do think that it could happen and it looks like travis strikes again no more heroes is set up to do well enough especially with that price point that's the major thing here 39.99 i think a lot of people are going to say okay well it's not necessarily what i wanted with no more heroes 3 
but you know what uh, it's like the price is fine and this will help us get no more heroes 3 because look at this company guys they're really small they don't have a lot of capital and i don't think people are lining up to fund this one when they can't prove that they can sell some copies of a game so we'll have to wait and see on everything here so what do you guys think about this whole thing with suit 51 grasshopper manufacturer travis strikes again gung-ho all this stuff let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. All right, Ninja, that wraps it up for this video here. Go ahead and check out the links in the description below. We've got Facebook and Twitter. Go ahead and give us a like and a follow on our social media. Hit that like button if you did like this video. It lets me know you guys want more content like this going forward in the future. And subscribe to Player Essence for this RPG Japanese Nintendo gaming news. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you, Ninja, for the next video. Peace.